Good morning everybody, very nice to be with you and particularly a warm welcome to those who I can't see but maybe will see me over the internet later. Let's have a moment or two of silence, remembering God's presence with us. And we join in the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, while these two commandments have all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And a moment or two of silence as we allow God the Holy Spirit to remind us of those things we said, done and thought, which have been against his will, upset him, upset others, we let ourselves down. And we say together, all mighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A comment. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Ezekiel chapter 36, beginning to read at verse 23. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them, then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and build a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and to be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave to your forefathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 14, beginning to read at verse 13. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, 
They do not know the need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men beside women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sadly, the coronavirus has affected all, most of all our aspects of everyday life. And that's included on what's on television. So over the past few weeks and months, we've had the opportunity to see the highlights of this or that series, or it's been billed as another chance to see or relive the exciting events, or sit back and enjoy the best, or catch again the top cop from the rare very first series. Basically, they're using other words to say, this is a repeat. And repeats can be quite good, I've found. When I've seen some of these repeats, I've enjoyed them. And I've seen in the programmes things I missed the first time. But more than that, of course, I'm getting to that sort of age where I can't remember what happened anyway, so it's good to see it. There you go. So repeats, not always a bad thing. And this morning, this little talk is a kind of repeat. For you and I must have heard the power, the feeling of the 5,000. And whatever I say now, I guess, will seem like a repeat. But as I say, repeats can be helpful. So, sit back and enjoy. I guess most of us have served for some time in the past, maybe today. We served on the committee. And I guess we would have come across the kind of person who pours cold water on any suggestion. The kind of person who has a very negative attitude to anything new. Oh, it wouldn't work here. We haven't got the people, the money, the skills, the resources. Or, oh, we tried it five years ago and it just didn't work. Now, it is important to realistically look at any idea or suggestion, so questions need to be asked and answered. Ideas and suggestions we need to look back, even if we discussed them before. It may be the right time now. And as Christians, we must always seem to discern what the Lord is saying to us. And in any given situation, I think it's always important to remember our little, multiplied by God's great resources, can do great things. Well, let's join Jesus and his disciples and note that they were in need of a holiday. Looks as though they need a bit of peace and quiet, a bit of time for Jesus and his disciples to have a chat together. The disciples, we hear, have been on a mission on their own. They've returned, been hectic. And Jesus himself had heard the news of John the Baptist's beheading and of King Herod's um, unhealthy interest in him, Jesus. So they needed rest and quiet. So they crossed the sea and hoped for it. However, the crowd saw them go and instead of going back home to get some sandwiches and food for the journey, off they went. So instead of peace and quiet, Jesus and his disciples were confronted with 5,000 men plus women and children. And we read, Jesus had compassion on them. And that day, he healed many, he taught them. There was no resentment 
the bait come and swallow this time of quiet and peace. There was no feeling that, well, they were a nuisance. Here we see love in action. And the Apostle John tells us that as the crowd began to arrive, Jesus asked Philip, where or how can we buy bread that these people may eat? And in asking that question, he was sort of testing Philip. Was Philip moved with compassion for this crowd? Had Philip begun to really understand who Jesus was? So Philip was challenged. And sadly, he replied, eight months' wages wouldn't buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. Basically, impossible. It can't be done. As the day progressed, so the disciples themselves began to be concerned and wanted Jesus to send the crowd away. But he challenged them. And he said, you give them something to eat. And presumably the disciples searched for food among the crowd and it was Andrew who came with the young lads five loaves and two fish. But as Andrew said, what are they among so many? So little, so little. Now, to be fair to the disciples, they were in a very difficult situation. Here was a vast crowd and by now they were getting hungry. And while at the moment Jesus was seen as a kind of hero, we know crowds can quickly change in mood. And in life, in our personal lives, in the life of the church, whatever committee we may serve on, we also can be confronted with difficult situations, enormous challenges, and so easy we can cry out, impossible. It just can't be done, or so little. If we only had more people, more money, more resources. That day, it was clear what Jesus wanted to do. He wanted the crowd to be fed. What was not clear was how he intended to do it. Today, tomorrow, whenever, First, of course, we need to pray and discern what the Lord is saying to us in a given situation. What does he want done? Then we need to see how it can be done. And in looking to move forward, we do need to, I believe, to remember the events of long ago. Sadly, the disciples that day just thought in terms of human terms. They didn't take Jesus into account already. He turned water into wine. Already he healed many people. Indeed, he healed some that very day. So, could he work here as well, in this situation? Well, so easy. A human being will react, impossible. It can't be done. Or so little, we have so little in the way of people, money, resources, etc. Well, I believe we need to always remember our little, multiplied by God's great resources, can do great things. Now, if my memory serves me correct, naught, nothing, times a great big number, no matter how big, still equals nothing. If we say it can't be done, impossible. We've got so little. And we say nothing. Can't be done. Our nothing times God's great resources. Nothing in time. But that day, five loaves, two fishes, so little. Multiplied by God's great resources. Wow, a miracle. Marvellous. They all left and were satisfied and there was plenty left over. The same to be true with us. Our little, multiplied by God's great resources. Well, who knows? Well, God Himself. Let's make sure we offer ourselves as that young lad offered his five loaves and two fishes. Let's pray.
Let's spend a few moments in silent personal prayer responding to God's written word, to what we've heard just now. Let's pray for the church worldwide, especially for those who are suffering because they belong to Jesus. Let's pray for the church in this country of ours, this Diocese of Chelsea, Bishop John, Archdeacon Mike, this deanery of ours, for this church, especially for Kingsley and Mark, Church wardens, members of the PCC, but each and every one of us. That we may discern what the Lord is saying to us and then be willing to play our part in it all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for our very troubled world, for the continued needs of the people in Beirut, country of Belarus, those areas of the world where coronavirus is on the increase, the health services there are struggling to cope, the governments throughout the world that they may make the right decisions, be clear in what they expect people to do, and compassionate caring for those who are struggling, are finding it difficult to cope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's especially pray for all those caught up with the results of examinations, our children and young people, A-level results, GCSEs, BTEC and all the rest of it. Let's pray for the individual child, the young person, that they may know the way forward. And for those who have responsibility of working it all out, that they may get it right, as right as it can be in these difficult circumstances. And let's pray for all the preparations that need to be made so that our children and young people can return to school in September in safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who are sad, who are unwell, who are being made redundant or fear they will be, families who are struggling to cope, maybe particular people you wish to pray for. A moment or two of silence if we pray for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's pray for people who need a holiday, like Jesus and his disciples, those who've been working hard always been available these past weeks and months, looking after others, caring for others, key workers and the like. Let's pray that people will have the opportunity to relax and recharge their batteries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, let's pray for ourselves for the church, this deanery, this diocese, this country, this world, wherever Christians may find themselves, let's pray that we remember that our little, and little it may be, but our little times God's great resources. Lord, help us to remember 
that if we offer our little to you, you are able to work in ways which often surprise and amaze us. So bless your people, wherever they find themselves, whatever the challenge is. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels with all the power of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hand, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave me thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints in the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And we say together, Our Father, we art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We say together, Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom.
join together, Almighty God. We thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Let his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.